All right, today we're taking a look at an Atwood machine, which is really just two blocks that are hanging from a string, which is run up over a pulley. Now this pulley is fixed in place, uh, connected to something like a ceiling up here. And the premise of this problem is that if one of these blocks is more massive than the other block, we want to solve for the acceleration of each of these blocks as this heavier block gets pulled downward, and in turn the lighter block gets pulled upward. Now there's a lot of variants or versions of this problem. Uh, some include mass in this pulley and maybe even friction in here. Uh, but today we're just looking at the simplest version of this Atwood machine, and that is just two blocks with different masses and a massless, frictionless pulley. Now in order to solve for the acceleration of each of these blocks, what we need to do is draw a free body diagram for each object. Now a free body diagram is nothing other than a picture showing all the forces acting on an individual object. So starting with this block over here, this block has some force by gravity acting downward on it. I'm going to call that the force by gravity on block one. And this block's going to be pulled up by some tension in the string, so I'm going to call that T. Now typically in a free body diagram, you want to show a large force with a large arrow and a small force with a smaller arrow. Now we see a similar situation over here with the second block. There's going to be the force by gravity acting downward and the tension in the string acting upward. And it's really important in this problem to recognize that the tensions on both ends of the string are the same. However much force is acting on one end of the string is going to have to be acting on the other. Now the importance of a free body diagram is it allows us to take the concepts in a problem and turn it into math. You see, looking at Newton's second law, which says that the sum of all forces acting on an object is equal to that object's mass times acceleration. We can plug in the forces acting on an object in order to solve for that object's acceleration. So looking first at this block right here, there's the tension acting upward and gravity acting downward. Those make up what's called the net force, or the sum of all forces acting on this block. But the issue is because one force is acting up and the other downward, they're opposing each other. And so ultimately what we need to do here is establish a positive direction, which I'm going to say is up. That means the tension is in the positive direction, or upward, and gravity is downward, or in the negative direction. So over here we'll have the tension upward minus the force by gravity downward. And that net force is causing this mass, I'm going to call that M1, to accelerate at some rate a. Now we know the force by gravity is equal to an object's mass times the acceleration due to gravity, so you can expand out this equation a little bit, leaving us with this, a single equation with two unknowns. Now if you approach this as though you're in math class, a single equation and two unknowns can't be solved, so what we're going to need to do is look at this other object, or this other block. And again, we're going to apply Newton's second law. But this is where the trick in the entire Atwood machine problem comes up. You see, if this massive block is pulled downward by gravity, this other block is going to move up. And so really the motion of these two blocks is coupled together. As one block goes down, the other goes up. And so if we said the upward motion of this block over here is positive, then the downward motion of this block over here is also going to be positive. And that might be counterintuitive to what most people think. It, typically you get used to just saying upward is always positive. But in an Atwood machine, the positive direction switches from one side of the machine to the other. And so in looking at the second law, the force down on this block is going to be in the positive direction, that's the force by gravity, and then minus the tension in the string is going to give us the net force on the block. And we're going to set that equal to M2A. And just like before, expanding out our equation for gravity, we come up with a single equation using Newton's second law that again involves two unknowns. And I mentioned earlier the tension in the string had to be the same between each block. But because these two blocks are tied together, their accelerations are also going to be the same. It's impossible for this block to accelerate downward faster than this block is accelerating upward. So all we have over here now is just two equations and two unknowns. So rearranging this first equation for the tension, 
then substituting that equation in down here, we have an equation that relates the motion of these two blocks to one another. Now realize, at this point the physics is done. All that's left is some algebra here. And working through that algebra, you finally get this equation for the acceleration of the system as a function of the two masses and gravity. And what's important to recognize in this result here is that what we actually have is Newton's second law applied to the entire system here. You'll see A is equal to this numerator here, which is really just the net force divided by the total mass. So provided you know the two masses and gravity, you can solve for the acceleration of either of these blocks. Now there's one big misconception that I want to bring up with this equation, and that has to do with the limit of what happens when we make this one block really, really heavy compared to the other. And a big misconception that people have is they think if we grow this mass indefinitely, the acceleration is going to continue to increase indefinitely or without limit. But look at it this way. Imagine there was no string here. We just cut the string and allowed the block to free fall. Well, in that case, the block would accelerate downward at g, or 9.8 meters per second squared on Earth. And the smaller block, no matter how little it is, is only ever just working against the downward acceleration of this heavier block. But with that misconception aside, this has been how to apply free body diagrams to an Atwood machine in order to solve for the acceleration of either of those blocks. I hope you found this useful, and on that note, that's all for now.